Okay, so uh, this one's going to be a little different. Um, I'm just going to sketch today. Uh, so I've got this really old sketchbook that has a few blank pages in it. Um, just thought I'd show off a few of the little robots that I designed about maybe 20 years ago. A little pizza delivery guy, a uh, little insurance guy, a uh, little uh, sort of uh, George Costanza kind of uh, neighbor guy. Um, Alien blob, random, a pet, hoochie, get it, hoochie, um, random box robot, I think we got a few more here, let's see, um, let's see, there's a little robot dude, kind of average everyday Joe kind of guy, uh, there's a little dude with some tank tread feet, what else I got in here, let's see. There's some more in here. These are some non-robot people. Just little character designs. Just in, a, you know, no particular style. Well, I guess these are kind of stylized. Just like the robots. You know, cartoony, basic. Um, um, racing mech. So... I'm just gonna put some ideas down on paper. You know, what I want it to look like. Um, maybe some ideas about the joinery. Um, that sort of thing. So I guess we'll just get started. I'm really not gonna do anything except draw. So you might find this interesting, maybe you won't. <laughs> maybe uh, I'll get inspired and create something interesting. So my original idea was to uh, kind of emulate those like an old race car um, uh, like a Jaguar XKS S or a 1957 Ferrari Testarossa you know the the old school kind of uh, curvy cars that that had the the really neat looking let's see if I can find a pencil that's working uh oh there we go they had this sort of um style of some of you might remember the AC uh, ace or Cobra style where they had the the mouth in the front with the headlights that, that sort of thing is kind of what I'm going for but uh, you know a little windshield Something like that. But uh, instead of a car, we're going to do a, uh, a robot. So maybe that gives you some idea of what I'm kind of going for. So let's uh, start with um, one of the ideas I had was a sort of a universal pilot pod that would be for the real high-end vehicles something like this where you've got this sort of a pod and the pilot sits inside the pod and this little you know kind of like a safety mechanism this is the chair so the pilot would be sitting something like this in there You know, pressing on their pedals and stuff. And they might have like a, some sort of, um, you know, VR kind of helmet sort of thing that's wired up with some controls. Something like that. And then this pod would be mounted into the, the vehicle, uh, either through the front or the rear, 
but mainly in the in the, the main part of the torso. So a head would be up here, for instance. Arms would be somewhere around here. And then the body over here. And you might have part of the pot sticking out. That's kind of an ejection system. Or maybe they would uh, lower it through the front cavity of the chest. So that the, uh, you know, pilot could get out. And then there'd be like a little ladder or something or a platform that would fold out and they would just come out this way. Let's lift that up a little bit more. Where everybody gets to see. So that's one idea. Um, I wanted my mech to be long and lean, uh, kind of like a runner. So I wanted the legs to be, the lower leg to be really, really long. Really long. Where it hinges at the knee. And then have a kind of a very small footprint. So the angle of the uh, ankle would be high up. Almost like a hoof. And then the upper thigh would be really heavy. Something like that. At least that's one idea. Other thing I was kind of looking at is um, making a uh, very small upper torso that's got that kind of race car look. I want this thing to be real real light other thing was uh some pistons or some cooling vents coming out on the sides uh, at an angle so the pilot pod would be somewhere in here like that a bunch of cameras and kind of a small head, something round and curvy and aerodynamic, like a wing maybe or a teardrop. And the upper arm would be kind of somewhere over here. The arms, they wouldn't be as important for grabbing things as they would for balancing it. So I'd kind of wanted to be a Long, but uh, also to where they could tuck in if I needed them to. So I'd make something like a sort of a pod for skidding where the fingers were located inside. So you'd have your the inside out edge of it. Outside would be kind of like this, sort of again, sort of teardrop shape. This would be the, the inside section. So you'd have like a thumb over here with the fingers, maybe two or three fingers coming out over this way. And the reason for that is then they could put some skid plates on the sides, you know, like they do with motorcycle suits. So that when they're racing downhill, and maybe put something like that over here too, some kind of skid plate.
they could line up. And I say racing downhill because, yes, there's another idea I've got is um, deployable wheels. So I haven't quite mastered how I want to do that or figured it out, but I want to put them like on some kind of retractable mount. So that they would kind of do this, drop down, and what you end up with is kind of this wheel sticking out the back end of the, where the heel would be, and then maybe have a, some kind of wheel that would pop out of here behind the uh, foot. and the rear wheel would have the motor inside the wheel. So this rear wheel would be, let me adjust, sorry, didn't even see any of that, did you? That rear wheel would have a kind of, um, we'll draw a little 3D model of it, a motor inside the, the hub of the wheel to drive the tire. So the tire would be something like a some sort of sport tire on a like a fast car with the motor inside it. So there's a motor right in the middle of this thing that would deploy out and it would be like a powered skate or something. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's kind of the way I'm going. So I guess let's try and come up with a little shape for that torso that looks kind of slick. I think in Something almost feminine, narrow waist, big hips, long, long legs, spindly, not overly built, really, uh, you know, that'd be the head. Neck area. this at an angle and then maybe like some kind of scooped area here and take bent section waste waste area hip section This is kind of hard to see it's because I'm really sketching this without a lot of, this isn't really pre-planned or anything. So that would be one leg. I'm 
This would be the other leg. And then kind of a little kneecap. And like I said, long, long, long legs there. So, going back to this. Let's say... head ideas. Time to switch pencils. That one's kind of not really doing so great. Lead keeps popping out. Um, maybe give it kind of a, a face. And then where some cheekbones would go, we'll give it some little venturis, little vents or something. sweep like a spoiler there. And then the neck would be something like nothing kind of too crazy. camera um, well, maybe not these little well, I like drawing in pen you have to commit if you're doing it in pen pencil I feel like a, I don't know like I'm cheating you don't have to commit as hard to what you put down you can always get rid of it some head ideas. Kind of like in a sort of mysterious teardrop shape though. Kind of a hint of what might be a chin or something. Maybe we can Something in here like a hose. Running off the back. or something for this maneuverability. Make this like a long wing. So there's some ideas for a head. We can follow back up with that. Let's see the legs. Now what I want the legs. 
just to look. Mm. Let me see. We're kind of like a in motion. I kind of feel like we're sticking to that thick calf look. this a little bit more. Put some vents on it. Maybe we're going to release some air. Show the joints or hide the joints? I guess it doesn't really matter. Hook this up with like some kind of ferro fibrous tissue, like mechanical muscles. Nah, I like the smooth look. Yeah, all right. So, run out of paper here, but I'll just keep filling it out. I guess we could just do one run of paper with just nothing but arms on it. And then one with nothing but legs on it, and we'll tie them all together. Hmm. So the arms. Well, I guess if you started with like a human arm, you got like a shoulder muscle, muscle there, kind of like a forearm area, wrist. Hand, thumb area, I don't even know if I got that on there, that's a neck, right? Yeah, this is an arm, not a leg. Maybe integrate the thumb into that body section there. Or some kind of hint of a, where a thumb would start. I feel like this would be something like one of those Fingers kind of hidden by this protective little section here. So you can still grab stuff. And then maybe.
little racing kind of stuff here. Sponsored decal. Other way I could go. Let's see if I can. Now instead of that, I had also thought of uh, like a Japanese uh, style, like old school style downhill drifter, but. Um, like if you took that show uh, Ride Back, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the anime Ride Back with little two-wheel motorcycle bots and a very famous show in Japan called uh, Initial D. If you combine maybe something like Initial D with uh, a mecha, maybe you'd come up with something like uh, those pods would be they would try to take as much off of them as possible. You know, up with some kind of frame, tubular frame of some sort. Person would be right here. Their little VR goggles and they're wired up. Some kind of glass or front section. And I guess uh, instead of having a head, maybe just build up the whole thing from there. Huh. So maybe let's just try to do something like do some kind of shadow build here. Spherical. Spherical tire, spherical wheel in the rear. Two toed. And you could have a wheel here. And that drops down. So, a round one in the back.
some kind of linkage. So front view something like that. Not sure if I'm sold on the really short thighs now. I do kind of like maybe something like that though. I should be really flexible and maneuverable. So looks like a German salle.
Not liking that. Pull that up a little bit. There we go. Headlights? No. Nah. I don't like headlights. No headlights. But maybe a open vent right there. like a collar of some kind like around the uh the head space you know like a high collar right here but it doubles as like kind of a cooling intake or maybe it's carbon fiber Find out if we can. If we can um, enter more than one eighties whale tail here. So this isn't the arm, this is like a little thing that sticks out. We'll have another one come out over here. Just to kind of Give it some an interesting look. The arm's going to be right here.
I have to draw or build something to make this work. Would that be down low, maybe? Are there racing? see maybe tuck in Put the wheel in the back wheel in the front Skaters. Inline skaters, they do that sort of tuck. Where they've got So we got one leg forward like this, one leg backward, and then wheel, wheel, wheel. 
And then this one's way in the back. This one's down here. So that kind of translates into something like one leg over here. back over here torsos over here heads right here arms tucked in this way that's this one Two would be over here somewhere. I kind of flipped these two legs though. Well, how would that translate into something that looks like this? Um, more lean. Okay. So maybe that would be a longer arch. More dramatic tuck. Where'd the pilot be? A lot of questions. This camera's moving or I am. Hmm. Maybe that's better.
another Sharpie around here. Yeah, all right, let's get the Sharpie in. So, I had doing something like this. The arm is doing something like this. Lots of thumb fingers. The back. Got this doing this bit. A little bit of a neck area there. So this is the arm, we'll call the dotted area of the arm, leg, torso, head. And somewhere in this mess there's a cockpit and some engine parts somewhere. Maybe a, even an exhaust or something, who knows. A little muffler on it. So I was looking at uh, ways to hook this thing together, 
we'll get back to this. Because I'd like, I mean, if you're going to put the effort into making something this size and spend this much time on building it, it may as well be posable. So, um, yeah, I noticed a lot of the Gundams use those ball joints. Um, I don't have those. I don't have a Gundam. I haven't seen a Gundam model in forever. Um, except online, of course. Uh... If I had to think about it, most of those ball joints are, and even armatures that you might see like in a little stop motion figures are usually something like this. You've got a plate, two holes, something holding them together. So that's plate number one. Plate number two, usually threaded on one side, right? And then you've got a ball and another ball. And that ball's usually got something. Am I even getting this on camera? I don't even know. And then, uh, oops. Something that looks like this. So I got some I got some thoughts on that. And then I guess the screw would go like in there. So screw tightens this one together this way. The ball joint. It's sandwiched in between these two sections. These are little recessed holes on those pieces of metal. The screw goes in and you tighten that and it keeps these two pieces from coming off. And then here you got a rod coming out of that ball on either side. And what you end up with is this really nice, flexible well, I don't know about flexible, but a really nice way to you know, connect your arm joints or elbow joints, what have you, whatever piece you want to connect to them. You know, this might be a, a knee or a shoulder. This might be where the foot is. You might shorten the distance between these and make it really little like, like this. So you've got a smaller one that does the same thing more or less. Uh, ah, like that. Just like that. This is a ball joint. Or one type anyway, armature ball joint. Just like this. I don't know why I'm drawing it for you, I've got one. So, I'm able to move these things around. You can also I guess one idea for you guys that like to use the beads, uh, I need to get some. I had this theory about that. Let's say this is a bead. A little thick plastic one. And you got a hole that goes all the way through. Oh, damn it. There's your bead, right? Let's get rid of all these extraneous lines here. There's your bead. The bead. Holes going through this way, you put like thread through it, right? Well, take the bead. At least this is my idea anyway. Take the bead. 
and very gently and carefully take a file um, or a Dremel or whatever uh, and cut a little piece out of it about this big. So you've got this nice little section cut out where the hole continues through. And then drill another little hole down here. So if I look at it from a cross section, what you've got is, here's your bead, cylinder, whatever you want to use. Here's your hole that you normally have through it. You're gonna drill one hole this way until it intersects with that. And then you're gonna cut a slot right here. It doesn't have to be that big, but you know, you get the picture. So what you end up with is a bead that looks like this. It's just a bead with a, oh, maybe not so wide. You end up with a bead that's got a sort of a little cutout. So what you do is you take a piece that makes it just about to here little dowel piece you shove it in there so that it's sticking out this way you glue something to that so now this thing has this piece here has 180 degrees of movement so you've got a little stick that goes all the way around this way. All right, so this piece here can move all the way this way. Then the one that you drill the hole out for, which maybe don't drill it out all the way into it, you just do this and you wedge another piece in there that just glues in place. So now what you've got is basically like a, the two pieces you should end up with is you've got your bead section Should look like this, like a little hammer. Oh, too tough on these pencils. Right? Should look like a little Thor's hammer with a hole in it. Maybe with a deeper groove. And then the other section. which is the piece that goes through here, looks like this. That goes in there. This part goes there. And you end up with a little swivel joint. Um, that's just one idea I think that might work. Um, then we can, you know, I can glue lower leg, upper leg. Yeah, you know, cheap and easy. I did find uh, 
couple guys online that were making versions of of this without having, because you know, I mean, you buy these things, they're get expensive. And I'll, I'll put their links down below, but uh, one guy had a really nice recommendation um, for uh, using bicycle chain or motorcycle chain. I think it was bicycle chain. You know what bicycle chains look like. They kind of look like a piece like this. And they're attached to another piece like this with a rivet inside. So what you would do is he just would take a little ping or rod and tap out these rivets or whatever they are, pins, I guess. And uh, he'd end up with a couple of pieces look like this. Yeah. And then he would just get a little ball joints and stick them in there. And he was doing something like welding them together. There's another guy that was doing something really complicated with brass. Found a third guy. I really hope, you know, if I don't find the links for these folks, I mean, I was just kind of looking through hundreds of different ideas. Uh, but there was, a, there was another guy who came up with a really interesting solution, and that was uh, he bought some stuff on eBay. He was like, you know what looks like this? Because he said he used to work at, I guess, at a jewelry store or something. Little barbells. That for piercings, you know, all the little goth kids like to wear and I don't know, kids who like to pierce themselves a lot. So, yeah, you can buy a bunch of these, like maybe, I don't know, four, eight for like 10 bucks. Um, if you can find them cheap, maybe on Amazon or someplace. And uh, yeah, it's kind of neat because they not only have that, but they're also... Um, thread it on one side maybe both sides I think it's just one though and the ball goes right on there and then you can make you can make these plates literally I mean if you really wanted to you can make them out of styrene plastic it doesn't really matter but this rod which tends to be the weakest link every time uh, I don't know if you've seen videos of people moving or ever owned a toy and you're wiggling it around that rod always breaks because it's plastic this would be made out of stainless steel and you could make this part out of whatever you wanted to wood plastic metal um i've got some aluminum laying around maybe i'll use that um yeah so those are my joint ideas for knees and arms and legs and things so i've got that covered i think um, not so much how I'm going to keep these two pieces together. I think what he did, that one guy did, is he, he drilled, literally drilled a hole on one side and then on the other plate, if you're familiar with what a, a tap and die are, he took this plate and when he, he drilled the hole a little larger on the top side and then smaller here, and he took a die, they usually look like this. And he threaded it for a, probably like an M1 or M3 screw, if you're into metrics. Um, and that's what he used to bind them together. That, I mean, that could work. Um, you could probably just, uh, well, I don't know. Um, no, you'll figure something out, I'm sure. Somebody will figure something out. Teach their own. Um, so, yeah, those are my little bonding ideas. Um Another thing I was thinking of using these beads for is, is uh, those little skate wheels on the feet. Um, I really wanted to make a runner, uh, just a straight runner, like a robot that could run and, and have some really kind of cool looking like cleat feet. And maybe, maybe I'll still do that. I don't know. If the wheels doesn't look, maybe I'll have interchangeable feet on it. I, I don't know. So the, the feet would have like these really cool looking little cleats on the toes. You know what I mean? And then the foot would be up here. There'd be a heel. Like a shock. Like I said, I still haven't decided on the, the legs. I might end up making them more like human legs after all instead of that short thigh long calf 
thing. Um, and then maybe uh, put a put a wheel here anyway as a sort of a secondary means of of motion. Stick another wheel in here, and then you know this thing could maybe move up and it'd still have that sort of skate wheel, which I'm you know that's that's kind of the big problem with the wheel either. You either go with the foot that runs or you go with the skate wheel. It's really hard to integrate it to where both work and you get a hybrid that does the same thing as good as one or the other. Um, I think that's the biggest problem running into. And I know they're robots, but I mean, for me, one of the big things, uh, like I said, if you're going to put that much time, I mean, you may as well make it, to, it, it, at least in my mind, it has to be kind of feasible. Obviously, there's no one that's making a, a giant skate mech um, that actually functions. But, you know, I mean, I'd like it to at least look visually functional. Um, the idea of a that spherical wheel, though, kind of, I always think like a motorcycle wheel. You know, you want a motorcycle wheel that's nice and round so that you can lean into a turn you know you can't really do that with a like a square tire wheel a little bit more difficult you, you get something like this on a motorcycle you will slide everywhere this however uh, on a motorcycle and this is pure fun So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm probably boring you guys to death now. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just, I'll draw out a few more for the one or two people that are watching this. Uh, a few more uh, torso ideas. Again, going for that sort of feminine look. Oh, I wonder what that could be. Um... So let's go with the torso. This would be the upper section. And then where would the arm go? Somewhere around here, maybe. So the head would be, maybe I could do a small angled head. I did a sculpture a long time ago that was something like a, it was like a rat rod. Uh, and it ended up, it was like a rat rod runner. Like a sort of an android runner. And it had this really extreme neck. And these kind of, this kind of like hair that came out that was made out of like wires and cables and stuff. And on the back, it had some uh, really cool looking uh, piston heads coming out on both sides. And this sort of like, you know, female build. And the arms were long and thin. The, and then on the inside this section, there was like a little motorcycle or belt drive with a couple of wheels like there was a motor built in here and then uh this arm this leg and this leg were kind of like let's, let's extend this out something like this and when i got to the foot they were up like that and uh, the feet were like, the, the tops of them were like racing pedals. Sort of like this. And so when I wanted to make a mech, I thought, well, I'd like to I'd like to revisit that that build. Go some go with something like that for this build. 
but make it a little more mechy and a less abstract. So maybe I'll maybe I'll go look at just doing it like kind of like a a motorcycle, but I still wanted to be I, I wanted it to be small enough to race on a on a street. I don't want to build this like giant giant mech. So I wanted it to be like, you know, the cool kids are bringing out their, their bots to race for pink slips or something, you know? Is that eraser again? Da -da. So we'll see. This might still be a good good idea. Wheels, wheels, wheels. I think probably at this point, one of the better things to do is is just build the damn thing. See see where you know start building parts and piecing them together. See how they come together. And, and worry about the rest later. You know, come up with some some ideas. Maybe a cool fuel tank or something. I mean, is it still a mech? I don't know. 
I think so. I just put enough Mackey elements in it. I'm sure it will be. We'll say this is uh, Number 21. Every... Lucky Lola. Gotta have a name if it's a race vehicle. Right. God help me, I'm gonna break every pencil I own. I don't want a sharpie. Well, even if I'm loading that thing right. I'm being honest. Oh, maybe I am. Okay. Two. are too far out. This thing's got to taper some more. Or it does something like that.
Okay. Respot. Race back anyway. We'll see. Let's start. figure all this out. I'm not sure if I like all that. Maybe a more rotatey kind of thing going on. Something like that. Some vents. Keep it aerodynamic. The less detail, the better, right? Kind of like the idea of a plate hanging here. So if it was really big and the pilot was up here, it'd be something like The pilot would be back here somewhere, right? Inside the head.
Ну, а, самое. Cookie sketches help you get the workout. Um, mm. the wheel way back here. Stabilization, have them fold up, have this one retract, and then go back into running mode. from here maybe all right I think I think this has been a long enough video I'm gonna give everybody a break uh, anybody who saw this thanks for being patient and um, hope you weren't completely bored um, yeah hour and 39 minutes Jesus have a good evening <laughs>